Good morning. This is the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Wednesday, September 1st. Looking at our impact map for today, our main concern, strong winds along the Sierra front across extreme western Nevada, gusting over 30 miles per hour with humidities down in the single digits. The other story will be the monsoonal push of moisture across southern areas from far eastern Nevada into most of Utah and maybe even southern Wyoming. Uh, plenty of wetting rain, lots of lightning, and in between all that, we continue with the smoke pouring out of, our, out of our fires across Northern California and Southern Oregon. That'll be a mainstay for the next couple of days. Uh, there will be some strong winds near 30 miles per hour with drying humidity uh, across parts of Nevada and maybe far southwest Utah, but a lot of these areas would have gotten wetting rains recently or fuels are still too moist, not as big of a concern. Looking at the smoke forecast at the surface, uh, this afternoon on the left, tomorrow afternoon on the right, you can see the points of origin all across uh, our California fires pouring into the Great Basin. This is the vertically integrated smoke uh, uh, from the surface on up through several thousand feet. Average together, you can see again, uh, this afternoon on the left, tomorrow afternoon on the right. And uh, we did have lots of lightning push through the Great Basin. You can see the areas through here on the right-hand side. A uh, fair amount of moisture came in with them, though, and a lot of those areas in southern Utah, southern Nevada, fuels are already uh, quite moist. Uh, some of the northern fringe uh, precipitation here was lighter across central Nevada. Uh, we'll have to watch that for any new starts. The further west you go, uh, the drier the fuels tend to be. Had overall light initial attack, new fire starts in the red, existing fires in the yellow. So a few starts in the vicinity of our lightning. And looking at observed uh, precipitation for the past seven days, excluding the past 24 hours, it has been bone dry. As you can see on the left, most of the Great Basin receiving no precipitation. Uh, percent of normal on the right, that dark red indicates 0 to 5% of normal for the week. Uh, that is reflected on our fuels. You can see, especially uh, western Idaho and uh, western or northwestern Nevada, a lot of the fuels in the 90th to 96th percentile, but then there's a sharp change towards much more moist fuels, areas in the green that you see as you head further south and east. Satellite imagery shows that monsoonal moisture plowing up from far southern Nevada and Arizona into Utah and, and parts of Wyoming today. Probably won't get much into Idaho except maybe far southeast Idaho. The other concern, uh, still these tight height lines through here producing some good westerly winds this afternoon associated with a little pressure over southern Canada. So we go to uh, the upper level map. And again, you see that upper low over southern Canada, the dry air. And some of those upper level winds are around 30 to 40 miles per hour in that dry air mass. In the green is where we have the monsoonal moisture. You can see the high risk here on the right-hand side across the Sierra front for gusty winds. Um, not so much extending too far into the basin, just coming off the lee of the mountains. Otherwise, uh, still moist and very moist as you head further east. You can see these humidities bone dry on the right-hand side, single digits in the west. But then you head further east, you're 20, 30, 50, 60 percent. Pretty dry in Idaho as well. We look at the winds on the left, and it's only this concern through here, right on the Sierra front. We see some of those purples and oranges gusts could approach 30 miles per hour. Otherwise, winds inconsequential. On the left-hand side, the precipitation here, you can see wetting rains. The purples are a half inch to an inch and a half of rain. We have quite a bit of that across the higher terrain of Utah into the Arizona Strip, as well as parts of far eastern or southeastern Nevada. Now for tomorrow, that moisture starts to move out. We'll probably have some leftover showers, dry air coming in, still relatively breezy, but not too bad. You can see our seven day on the right. Uh, the winds. Um, the strongest winds will be across eastern Nevada, uh, 20 to 30 miles per hour, not super critical. The humidity will be in the teens. Uh, however, fuels there are still on the moist side, so we're not as concerned. But as we go into Friday, we see drier air overspreading the region given by those tannish shades. We start drying out on the seven-day outlook. Um, winds pretty strong, but inconsequential across the Snake River Plain and parts of Utah. Um, but we're starting to dry out, and we'll see that trend continue. 24-hour precipitation totals, you can see them through here. The blues and the light blues are half inch to an inch and a half of precipitation, but not too much once you get uh, uh, been into the northern part of Utah. And uh, most of, Arizona, of Nevada does miss out on the precipitation. Now we go into Saturday and see high pressure building in, getting hot and dry temperatures about 8 to 12 degrees above normal. Um, 
So again, a good drying trend you'll start seeing are drying on our seven days. So if you go sequence through the next couple of days, you see more brown on the map as that high pressure continues to dominate Monday and into Tuesday. Uh, we stay dry and a lot more areas get become critical, as you can see on the right-hand side of the seven-day potential. Seven-day precip totals, and most of this will be in the first uh, two or three days. And the 8 to 14, the outlook going into the second week of September, much above normal temperatures on the left. Uh, we do see a monsoonal push of moisture into Nevada and southern Utah, so that could be some welcome relief, but we stay normal or normally dry for the northern half of the Great Basin. This concludes our briefing. Have a great day.